Yes, sir. All right, here we go. Okay. Welcome to the Dirty Slides Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Prano, coming to you live from, oh, you know it, the Smut Shack. The Smut Shack Studio here in Venice Beach, California. And I'm sitting here with my two favorite Andys. Andy Murray out of Wimbledon, dropped out. <laughs> only got two, him. Only two remain. <laughs> my co-host for this fantastic podcast, Andy Laz Lazarus here on the couch. Oh, good to be here, Joe. Good to be here. Andy Ruther in the smut shack. He's working the ones and twos. Oh, chicka chicka. Yeah. Look at him back there on back there producing. Yeah, man. I, I've, I like look, he, look at him. He's not talking. He's got his producer face on. I think he enjoys this. I think he does, too. He's got the, those sick headphones. He likes he likes being like the the king of the thus. Yeah, he you are the king of the thus. Well, man. Andy, uh, Laz, it's good to see you again. Good to see you too, man. Uh, it's Welcome been a back. couple weeks. Fantastic job filling in. Thanks uh, with Telly uh, I, a couple weeks ago. I really enjoyed hearing you insult Pete Sestaro by telling him he was a semi pro ball player because he played unaffiliated professional baseball. I didn't. I <laughs> I, I, I didn't even mean to insult him. I know I you like, didn't, but it was still the best. Because like, you hear Ooh. you hear semi pro all the time, right? Right. So if that's not semi-pro, what is semi-pro? Semi-pro is the Venice Gays. Venice Gays. Whoever he, the Long Island Bears, whoever he got played for, that's professional baseball. Okay. Professional the Gays are baseball. semi-pro because why? You buy people some like you buy some no, beers I mean, after it's the game. Like you don't get paid. Right. That's it. That's, <laughs> that's it. That's not professional. That's amateur baseball. That, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But we're like semi-good. Right. So we're semi-pro. Yeah. Well, it was. Uh, it's it, not college, and it's not pro. Semi-pro. You know, somebody brought it up and. Uh, Ruther and I have talked about it, and I think it really speaks to the growth of DSPN. Mm -hmm. Your episode with Telly was the first ever production from the Dirty Sports Podcast Network that did not feature myself or Andy Ruther. Wow. So the wow. process Historical. hath been thusted. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And then we came back. But two, honestly, two great episodes. Yeah, two great gone, episodes. Really nothing, interesting. Nothing like better that. than the original lineup. No. Nah, nothing better nah, than the original rotation. Nah. You got to go rotation. back to the OGs. Glavin. Maddox, Smoltz. you know, righty, righty, lefty over here. Yeah. And uh, we got a lot of stuff to get into before we even go around the league. I want to it. congratulate you. Mm. Uh, you have a bottle of kettle one at my house. Yes, I do. The beef, the, the, the Oregon, Oregon State, State Beavers. Beavers win. I also want to give a shout out to Dylan Cahoon. Yeah, we got to give a shout out uh, to Dylan. He was our slide into the DMs College World Series correspondent. Yeah. I believe he was there in Omaha, mm -hmm. and he was just keeping us up on the goings-on in Omaha throughout the College World Series I tournament. thought the best two facts from Dylan were that the UT fans had the most smoke shows. Yeah. and the, We knew that already. Yeah, but, we but knew great, that for but, confirmation. Yeah, it's it's still good to get that confirmed. Um, and uh, fun fact about the Oregon State fans, his least favorite fans, because they actually wanted their team to lose so they could get half off gear like price yeah like what it's weird what's wrong with you it's super weird yeah and you uh, won oregon state but kind of fuck you but amazing series uh three game series finish yeah uh god why am i blanking on who they played i played arkansas arkansas yeah? Yeah. right uh, yeah arkansas wins game one mm -hmm. arkansas has them down to the final out the final out in game two right they they duff a foul pop up. That's right. Bermuda Triangle. Three guys enter. All three guys leave. <laughs> all three guys leave. None of them with the ball. The shortstop was running in as hard as he could. I got it. I got it. I got it. Oh shit! He overran it. By he 10 overran feet. it. Yeah. Yeah. And the other guys, probably one of them, which you know could have caught it and defers to the shortstop. Well, you got to defer it to the shortstop because if you also if you're the right fielder, that's your ball. That's your ball. Right. That's your ball. Your ball. I, I guess it was a second baseman. Okay. It was the first baseman who was running after it. As a first baseman, you're running after it, but you're thinking, somebody one, call me One off. of these guys <laughs> Somebody it. call yeah. me off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's your ball if you're the right fielder. Yeah, it is. And uh, they defer to the infielders coming flying over. He overruns he it. He wanted it too much. It lands. They get, another, they get new life. Walk-off bomb. Win game three. Was it walk-off bomb or – no, because they were – I don't know if it was walk off because after that it was like because they were the visiting team. Right, not in that at bat, but right. yeah. But yeah. But then it was like the floodgates opened. They yep. scored like six runs. And I was like, ooh. But including so a go just, sorry, I should say a go ahead homer. A go ahead homer, yeah. And then which was pieced. And then they win game three. 
That's uh, that's Buckner esque. Yes, it is. It is in, in terms of a, a well. I mean, it's not an error. It's not an error, but it's an error of just wanting it too much. Yeah, yeah. Just not relaxed. Got to Andrew Jones your way over to all yeah, baseball. Yeah, exactly. Never break a sweat. Exactly. Just Don't overrun. Stay the under ball. control. I but, guess overrunning it is better than not getting there. Although you don't get there, you can dive at the end. You overrun it, you're pretty much fucked. That's true. You you don't. It's you got to work smarter, not harder. It's not often that the guy who overruns it gets the lean. You know the lean back. Right. You come right. That almost never, never ends happens. well. No. Yeah. Um. So shout out to Dylan. Congratulations to you. Thank I have, you. I have a, I have a nice tall bottle of kettle on top of my refrigerator, just waiting Excellent. for you. And that was your. Uh, by the way, that was also your wild card was selection. It? No, nice. Yeah, you nice. Just, you picked the Corvallis region in the wild card selection. And you got the Beavers. That's incredible. And you won. That's incredible. Um, all right. I did zero research for that. So let's start. We're gonna keep the show pretty fast. This is my third podcast. Today. I know you've been, you've been been a podcasting been, god I've been today. Thusting the process yes. hard. Uh, but we'll we'll do a quick trip around the league. Uh, the AL East. Is now a dead even heat. Still the Red Sox and the Yankees. Yankees, Red Sox tied for first. Did you watch Man. any of that series over the weekend? I didn't. I didn't see anything. What happened? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Yankees took two or three. Okay. Uh, pulled themselves into a tie. Um, but but yeah. Mookie Betts is back. Red Sox are all healthy. It's just like yeah. one of those. It's really just a battle. Both of those teams are 100% making the playoffs. 100%. Uh, it's just who's going to have to play a one. It's like crazy because they're going to go back and forth all year. One of them is going to. One of them have to play an all for nothing One of them is probably going to have, you know, a uh, a home series. Mm-hmm. And well, one of them probably. Yeah. One of them, because I don't think the Indians will catch either one of them. One of them will likely have a home series. The other one will play a one game. Yeah. No shit. Fuck off fest. Fuck with, off fest. Right. With the Seattle Mariners I, I got right a, now. I got a feeling it's going to be the Yankees and it's going to be Severino against Paxton. For all the marbles. See? Yeah. AL, sexy this yeah. year. Yeah, AL is sexy. Tampa Bay. Uh, or Tampa Bay. Not horseshit? We, we can talk about them. Oh, no. Tampa really? Bay, 13 games back, but they are now 42 and 41. Do you know what turned it all around? Huh, no. The opener. Oh, they, oh they Sergio have, Romo? They have the best the opening closer? starting ERA in baseball since going with the opener. Oh, wow. Yeah. Good for them. Way to go, you know. What do you, what do you think outside the box, Tampa Bay? Yeah, exactly. You know? Forty two and forty one. They've been they've been you know pretty solidly on fire. They I believe they won the series this weekend against the okay. Astros. All right, and, good for you. Yeah, and the rest of the AL East not not worthy of mention. But I like it. I think Tampa Bay. I think that move. I do think that there changes are coming when it comes to pitching in baseball. And I think it Maybe. might be it might be teams. Like Tampa Bay, it might be teams that don't have like high profile star players that have they have to worry about their statistics. But right. no, it's kind the of first like team, love the one you're li- you're with kind of deal. The first you know? team that manages to like contend in that style could be the one that breaks it open. It could be. I mean, I feel like the Kansas City kind of did a similar kind of thing just with their bullpen a couple right. of years ago. And then the Indians did that. And the Indians did that. But I don't know. We'll see if it has any long-term effects. Speaking of the Cleveland Indians, they are the only team to speak about in the AL Central. 45 and 37. They are now nine games up on Detroit and Minnesota. 16 and a half up on the White Sox. 20 and a half up on the Kansas City Royals. Jesus. That yeah. division is horseshit. Yeah. But Cleveland, like, they're going to win that division. The, the- I also saw that Danny Salazar is out for the season. Yeah. That hurts. Yeah. Yeah, but the rest of the AL so sexy that's going to make the the playoffs or likely to make the playoffs. Obviously, we're not even at the All Star break, so you, nothing's in stone. But I still like the Cleveland Indians, just like being being a you know sort of being like the 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 upsetter in the, right. in the playoffs. Like they won't like have nobody's to, counting on them. They won't have to play that wild card game. They sure won't. You know? Yeah. Uh, the AL West, everybody's favorite division. Four teams over 500. The Texas Rangers, the only team not, 16 and a half back. The LA Angels have lost the the, Their the magic that yeah. came with Shoei Otani. And they're 43 and 42 still, 11 and a half games back. Ooh. Your Oakland, Oakland A's, Athletics, are they in third place? 46 and 39, and they're only eight and a half games back. Good for you guys. Seattle, a half game back of Houston. They've merely played one less game. Yeah. And both of those teams... 
are awesome and sexy. Yes, awesome and and indeed and, sexy. Yes, and sort of pacing the Yankees Red Sox for best best record record. Uh, Houston fifty five and thirty one. Seattle fifty four and thirty one. Yankees fifty four and twenty seven. Missed a lot of games uh, due to weather. And Boston fifty six and twenty nine. So they're all so sort is of it right possible there. that the AL wild card game could have two teams that have better records than anybody in the National League? Yes. Highly likely. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. All of the there's not a fifty one team in the National League. Your low key Atlanta Braves. Yeah, I know. Three games up in the NL East. Let's go. Forty eight and thirty four. Philadelphia forty five and thirty seven. Washington forty two and forty. And my Mets, who we will not speak of because they are now 33 and 48. Jesus. Remember when they were 14 and three? Yes, I do. Oh, and you had like stars in your eyes. The fastest team in, in the history of baseball to go from 10 games up to you 10 games. You were wearing on Mets day. gear for two straight weeks. Yeah. Before, I, I, the by, the way, the season. by the way, I rocked my Mets. I, I got a new Mets hat yeah. while I was in New York. Orange I, Bill? Uh, no. I went with the Blue Bill. Okay. I, have, I have the Orange Bill. Yeah. Orange Bill was my last year hat. Uh huh. And so I went back. My two year ago hat was just a regular blue. Yeah. So now it's now, you know, filthy. So I was yeah. like, let's get with the crisp blue. Yeah. I got it. And the amount of shit that Yankees fans threw my way. They're like, you wearing that because it matches your outfit? I'm like, nah, man. I'm wearing it because I'm a Mets fan. They're like, after April. And I'm like, yeah. yeah I don't know still, if you know. Still that's a how Mets being fan. a fucking fan yeah. works. Yeah. You fucking cheddar dick. Who still can't after name... Juan Samuel. Yeah. Still a Mets fan. Yeah, exactly. You fucking dickweed. Who can't, you, you, you who can't name anybody but Aaron Judge and John Carlos Stanton and yeah. just fucking Go fuck pretend yourselves. to like the Yankees. Yeah. Um, and then the Marlins somehow still below the Mets at 34 and 51, 15 and a half games back. You still love the Atlanta Braves? I still love those young dudes uh, patrolling the outfield and Camargo. So what I've said about this Braves team, and do you, I, do you think the Braves. Do you think they like their guys enough that they pull a, they pull a move at the break? Like, are they? You think they're going to yeah. try to contend? Yeah, I think they will. I think they will. I mean, because I just think they're so young and so good that it's almost like truly trust the process. Like you're probably not winning it all this year. I don't know. I, I feel like you see a lot of teams like, get there a year ahead of schedule. It's like the Astros. Remember when they got there two years ahead of schedule? Yeah. And then the next year they missed the playoffs because they yeah. kind of like went for it. Right. And then they came back and they won the World Series. Yeah. And they came back again. Yeah, I know. But like the Braves have so much in the bank as far as minor league talent that. So you go for it. I think. Yeah, that's what I do. If I was well, the, I, the Braves. Go one for reason it. why I think why I think you go for it is, again, no 50 win teams in the NL. So no one that's right. just a straight up standout. Your Milwaukee Brewers leading the NL Central 48 and 35. But the Cubs. They're back, baby. 47 and 35, merely a half game back, followed by St. Louis hanging around in our conversation at 42 Always. and 45. And I'd a like half to shout back. out uh, Jesus Aguilar, who's hit 19 bombs for the uh, for the Milwaukee Brewers. And every time I look up at like quick pitch or whatever, he's hitting a two strike bombed right center in a huge clutch situation. So that guy's my dude of the week, and, Jesus Aguilar. And Milwaukee. I feel like that's a team that they, they should go they for it for too. sure have to make a move. That's what I'm saying. Like if you're Atlanta and you know Milwaukee's going to go for it and maybe Washington and Arizona, you know, you might as well get in there too. Of all the teams that they're talking about, you know, them making a move for DeGrom, mm -hmm. uh, I like I I think I like, I think I like Milwaukee the best. Yeah. I, I'd be I'd be so down of and I it would hurt for him to be in the NL East and shove it. Yeah, I talked about it on last episode. I love the Seager and uh, some big process prospects for uh, Degrom, Degrom and Cabrera as Drupal Cabrera. Ooh, okay. Um, but I just don't want to see him go to a team of Chase Utley. So yeah. Also, I need the Dodgers to get rid of Utley. Yeah, I need that to be a part of the deal. And uh, then you don't okay. want uh, Utley coming back to the Mets. As no, part certainly of the not. Degrom no, I, I just, talk about I, your nightmare. I just want to. <laughs> I, I just want forced retirement. Yeah, it, we'll give you Degrom if you <laughs> if, if you, you kill Chase if, Utley if you DFA Chase Utley <laughs> for free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All you got to do is DFA the guy. But I also like him to Milwaukee. Yeah, yeah, definitely. 
I mean, the Cardinals have some pitching. You know, the Cubs got Lester, so you know they're going to be in there. Um, so, and then I'd go for it if I was. And Atlanta then the NL West. This is amazing. The Arizona Diamondbacks. By the way, they're the new kids on the block, hanging tough <laughs> in first place. They won ninety-two it. games last. Year. I know, but every but it. For some reason, don't you feel like you can pick up the vibe of baseball fans? It's like everybody's just waiting, like counting out, like, oh, here come the Dodgers. Ooh, look at the Giants yeah. doing their thing. It's like, meanwhile, Arizona's just like, call us we're when we're here. not in first place. Yeah, exactly. 47 and 37. But hey, the San Francisco Giants swept the D-backs in Arizona this weekend. Yep. And I got to um, apologize because a couple of weeks ago, I motherfucked Gorky Hernandez. It was like, hey, you're not in the Gorky Hernandez business, but Gorky Hernandez is having a great season. He's yeah. hitting over 300. He's got 10 jacks. He's he's playing a great center field. So my bad, Gorky. You're the man. Uh, you you guys have pulled even with the Dodgers. I know. That's weird. You're both five games over 500, <laughs> and you're both two and a half games out of first place. I mean, Johnny Cueto allegedly is coming back, so maybe we've got a chance. But I mean, I st- I still believe the Dodgers are the most and Smarja, right? Yeah, fuck it. What, what's yeah. Smarja going to do for you? No, I know, but like that's the question. Like when those guys throw come him back, in the throw, throw, make him the closer. I think make him the closer. Yeah, I I've always liked Smarja's stuff as a closer. Yeah, I don't know. You've watched him more than I have, up close and personal. But like, does he have, does he have a first inning struggle guy, or is he like a no? Comes out in cars for the first inning, and the fourth inning is where he falls apart. No, he struggles always, always. He just struggles. The thing about Samarja is he just doesn't get tired. Right. So he can be a total gas can for like eight years, and he just doesn't get tired. Samarja, fascinating because clearly made the better financial decision yeah. playing baseball over football, but like might have had a pretty Might, might have been like, a little cooler as an NFL wide receiver. But just think about like so Jeff Samarja, Patriots wide out. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't does, know. Does, Do he, you have, think does he have a Super Bowl MVP? How many white? <laughs> How many white receivers are there really in the league? Yeah, six. But Samarjo is big, tall. Yeah, white true. receiver. You know, so he I mean? could be like Jeff Janis or whoever. But you know, like what's funny is the Patriots always have the Amendola. They always have the Welker. They like the they little always, guys. Yeah, yeah. But they, because they can never find the tall white the guy tall to go on the, guy. on the outside. Seriously. I think that was Jeff Samarjo's job this whole time. Seriously, Notre Dame guy. Yeah. No, seriously, I trade the to Samarjo to to the Patriots for. <laughs> I don't know some prospects, and then Colorado, forty-one and forty-three. Guys that we could teach to hit. Yeah, forty-one and forirty-three, six games out. San Diego. Sorry, guys, got to bring back the Brown. I won't even give you your record. Yeah, no, you don't deserve it. So that's around the leagues. Cool. Uh, not a lot of moves. It's, it, it's really starting to be your your NL West and uh, and the Cubs, Brewers are probably like the most notable. Uh, you know division kind of uh, stories these days. Well, I mean, besides the Braves, Bes- right? Besides no, but, the Braves but, running away with the NL. But East. no, I mean, you know, the Phillies are three games back. I'm, yeah. I'm talking. But about, do you believe in Gabe Kapler? No, no, no. But my that was my point. Is yeah. uh, I I mean, in exciting like any one of your three teams in the NL West could probably still end up winning. I think the Braves will likely win the NL East. I I don't think the Giants are going to win the NL West. <laughs> I do not. I just. I still think they're too old. Um, Be buyers. Who? Yeah, who knows? They could make a Degrom? move. They could make a move for Degrom. You know. Um, but I. I just don't. I. I just. I just really think the Dodgers are the most talented team. Matt Harvey, throwing Cincinnati gas. Reds. Matt Harvey, Andy Ruther's Cincinnati Reds. Matt Harvey, the Dark Knight has returned. <laughs> His last three games, he's three and zero with a loving one, that gold star man. He's three and zero with a one point four seven ERA, fourteen strikeouts. Not exactly Randy Johnson striking out fourteen guys a game over his over the three starts in uh, uh, for the Diamondbacks that we just referenced on Dirty Sports. Oh, but uh, his velocity is up. Average fastball velocity fell to a career low ninety three point one over the month of April. Now back to an average of ninety five. Point five, his highest since July 2016. Somebody really, really wants out of Cincinnati. Looks like it looks like Matt Harvey's learned to love baseball again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, pitching about as somebody well as, wants to get traded to the Brewers. Yeah, pitching about as well as he has in a while. Ruther, what about this crazy theory? 
Harambe has been reincarnated <laughs> through Matt Harvey. The, so this is the revenge of the, Harambe. The true Dark Knight. The Dark Knight the of dark Harambe. The Dark Gorilla is back. So if Matt Harvey goes to the Cincinnati Zoo and starts pegging people with nine 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 five, yeah. it's Harambe. Just saying, guys. I'm, I'm saying right now, I'm rooting for that. I want <laughs> Matt Harvey to go to the zoo and start fucking throwing seeds at people. So I don't think... I, I don't think anybody around baseball is going, oh, let's make a move for Matt Harvey. Like, Matt Harvey's the answer to, like, sure up the back end of our rotation this year. Yeah. But does Matt Harvey get a decent free agent contract? Oh, certainly. I mean, he throws 95 for the rest of the summer? No question. Nobody's going to care about his VD or his models or whatever, whether he likes baseball or not. If he's throwing gas, like, he'll get a shot. Yeah. Yeah, and baseball contracts are stupid to the point where he'll get like he'll get seven years. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, we have some Mike Trout news. Oh yeah, Mike Trout still the best. Mike Trout passed ten Hall, Hall of, of Famers, Famers in war in war in the month of June. Who are they? <laughs> yeah, should we start from the? Let's start, start from, from the, the bottom. T- start from the bottom. Let's go to the bottom here. Uh. In June, Mike passed these 10 Hall of Famers in war. Harmon Killebrew. Damn. Yeah. Mark uh, Harmon Killebrew, one of the great power hitters in Major League history. He hit 573 63? home runs. 73. Led the league six times and retired at fifth on the all-time list. Giant, giant forearms. Uh, he was a masher, rarely hit above 270, and was limited to corner outfield positions. And such did, as such did not manage... More war in parts of 22 big league seasons as Mike Trout has in parts of yeah. eight. He was a big lumbering corner outfielder. Dan Kovaleski, a spitballer that I'm not sure I've heard of until now. This is from uh, For the Win on USA Today. So a spitballer who's in the Hall of Fame. Al okay. Spaulding. Invented the basketball? No. Before his name became synonymous with actual baseballs in his <laughs> post-playing career. As a sporting goods tycoon. <laughs> yeah, he's the guy. Right. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, what happened? Something went wrong. Um, I didn't know. I didn't know those. I knew Al Spaulding, and I know. No, Al I know Al Spaulding was involved in baseball from the very, very beginning. I didn't know he was a player, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Zach Wheat, a slick fielding, gap hitting outfielder whose career straddled the end of the dead ball era, had tiny size five feet. He was the Andy Ruther. Oh my god, of the dead ball era. I thought uh, the smallest feat I've ever heard of uh, on a big leaguer was Brett Butler, who had size seven. Wow. Size five? F- size five is crazy. My small Italian father had size six feet. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, but this was like 1896. So, like, yeah. Everybody was small. Dazzy Vance, doomed to be forever confused with his short time teammate and fellow Hall of Famer, Dizzy, Dizzy Dean. Vance. Dizzy Dean. Uh, he and the NL MVP in a 1924 season. Hmm. They kicked off an eight-year run of leading the league in strikeout-to-walk ratio. Uh, Jesse Burkett, a dead ball hitting machine who twice batted over 400. Jim Bunning, the only guy ever elected to both the Hall of Fame and the Senate. Oh, Senator Bunning. Yep. For the Phillies. And now we get to the big ones. Mike Piazza. The okay. best hitting catcher in baseball history, and it's not terribly close. He recently made the Hall of Fame just a couple of years ago. Um, wow. He's in the Hall of in Fame. In eight years. He, he was a great hitter. He in, was a great hitter. In eight years, Mike Trout has surpassed Mike Piazza in war. How about this one? Yogi Berra. Wow. Because he won a lot. Yeah. And he played catcher. A three-time MVP. An all-star in 15 straight seasons. Barra ranks sixth all-time in war among guys who primarily played behind the plate. That's and, impressive. And number one, Mike Trout, in the month of June, after less than eight seasons in his career, has passed. Mike Schmidt. Vladimir Guerrero. No shit. In, in war, in career war. No shit. Yes. That's impressive. A perennial MVP candidate with 2,500 career hits and 449 total homers. Guerrero was a deserving Hall of Famer and one of this author's personal favorites. He had a fairly short decline and was out of the majors at age 36. He played right field in the midst of an unprecedented era for offensive production. And because he did not 
get on base quite like Trout can. He did not produce more war in his stellar career than Mike Trout. But can Mike Trout hit a home run off a bounce pitch? Full big league seasons. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, just 10 more reasons he's the greatest white baseball player of all time. (laughs) Yes. No question. Now, we talked about Mike Trout being the greatest baseball player of all time at one point on the show. A lot of people uh, came to us with this thousand game comparison between Albert Pujols and Mike Trout. Yeah. Mike Trout uh, behind Albert Pujols in many a statistic, but obviously fielding. Not, he's a center fielder. Yeah, he's a center fielder and a and a fantastically good and one. And a damn fine yeah. center fielder. Um, also, stolen bases. Also, but like across the board, uh, pools. But So a lot of Cardinals fans came out of the woodworks. Like, if we're just handing out greatest yeah. of all time. Here's, right. But the other thing is, the game continues on after 1,000. And what we are doing is we are projecting that this is the beginning of Mike Trout. That We haven't seen full power Mike Trout yet. That's that's scary to think about that we haven't seen full power Mike Trout. I I mean, honestly, he's he's been in the big league seven years. Is that what he is? He's at twenty six. Less than seven, yeah. So at what point does he stop being a center fielder and moves to a corner or becomes a DH? Because I felt like when Pujols became a full time DH, he really it, it was really a slippery slope. Sure, for him, yeah. Um, but Mike Trout's twenty six. He is twenty six. But is I mean, he going to play a, center fielder till he's thirty, and then he moves to a corner outfield till he's thirty five, thirty five, thirty yeah, thirty four, and 35. then he's a DH. Yeah, no, I mean, I think he could rake up like some incredible numbers. I mean, we're looking at Mike Trout being on the verge of probably a ten year, four hundred plus million dollar contract, where for the Philadelphia Phillies, right? Which I disgust me that you <laughs> you even put that out into the the universe. But five years as a center fielder, five years as a corner outfielder. Yeah. And then maybe three more as a DH in the American League. And like also, or like, so that's like 13 more years yeah. of studliness. Uh, I had one other thing that I want to do, which was for the win, did a best mm-hmm. player at every position. Okay. But I, instead of kind of going through all that, we, right. we're on a time crunch today. Okay. I will recommend that everybody go to for the win. It's a pretty cool article. Um, they give you some choices and just going through sort of the best five at every position. Okay. But what I do want to shout them out for is they didn't give any options for center field. They just said, Mike Trout, it's Mike Trout. It's Mike Trout. Really? <laughs> like, so they're, they're not giving any love to prime Griffey and no, this Willie is Mays. currently playing. Oh, currently playing. Oh yeah, that's that's fair. The best the, they they give, sort of give you four or five choices at every position. Oh, okay, and then <laughs> they fair. did they did not give any options at at first base. So Good what work. I want to do now is slide into them DMs into the DMs because last week when I did the show with Pete, yeah, uh, we we got caught caught on so many tangents. Yeah, we didn't okay. even go around the league barely. Yeah, well, Pete uh, was like, "Look, I I haven't paid attention." Yeah, which, which I is get. great. Yeah, um, but a, but a, ba- a career baseball man. So yeah, no, definitely. We didn't end up talk. sliding into the DMs, so we've got a lot of DMs to slide. Let's to. catch up. All right, this first one is from Rebby Grill at Rebby Grill. Yo, Joe and Andy, what's your favorite dugout prank, and do you have any good dugout prank stories? Fuck Chase Utley. <laughs> I mean, I grew up in the uh, in the era of hot foot. Yeah, you know, which. Um, I never actually did on anybody and never, nobody ever did to me. Um, but I saw it, I saw it being done. Yeah. And it is pretty funny. So I grew up in the same era, essentially, and you'd see it on TV all the time. Right. And, uh, Roger McDowell, who was a Met, was sort of the, the, like he led the league every year in hot foots. Yeah. But I never knew the actual technical way to do a hot foot yeah like i didn't know what the process was yeah um so one time in the dugout uh this kid who was sitting out somehow he made the team even though he didn't play the whole year it was like hurt yeah uh steve asaka uh-huh. i covered his entire foot from behind the bench yeah i like went up behind the bench from the bottom and i covered his entire shoe and up to the ankle and lighter fluid <laughs> and that's I, a technique and i lit it on fire 
And it's not like that's it's certainly not that slow burn. No, 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 no. He was no. just then on fire. <laughs> and um, that's like hot calf. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. It burned yeah. off all the hair on his leg. He was he was a Greek. He was a Greek he kid. So much hair. He was a Greek kid. He went from having one hairy leg, two hairy legs, to one hairy leg and one just like charbroiled leg. Yeah. Uh, he looked like his leg had just been I on a spit at Boston hot... Market all day. <laughs> That's hilarious. I think the real hot foot technique also, is there's a wick. There's, yeah, exactly. And it's a wick. And it's slow burns slow and you burn. finally feel it. But I yeah. didn't know what to do. The other thing was because he wasn't playing, yeah. he would wear cleats and he'd wear like ankle socks, but he wouldn't wear baseball pants. He'd just wear shorts. Like He was like kind of our manager. Yeah. Um, he wear so, metal spikes. Yeah, he wear That's like weird. And so he's he, just asking for hot. So butt. he had shorts on. And I took off all the hair on his leg, <laughs> and I got in pretty severe trouble because I was like, I was doing a hot foot, and they were like, you were doing arson. <laughs> like <laughs> you, you set one of your teammates on fire, and I was like, well, that was a hot foot gone wrong. That's pretty. Roger solid. McDowell has not yet. YouTube isn't a thing. Yeah. I can't look up how to do hot. Foot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, this one is a uh, is a good one from. Beverly Mata at underscore what's the Mata underscore. Oh, there our guy Mata. Dirty slide into the DM. Shout out to Mata, by the way, who just came out to my show in uh oh, that's cool. at Stress Factory in New Jersey. Came up from Baltimore oh. with uh with Dame Dash. With Dame so, Dash. Yeah. Awesome. Uh dirty slide into the DMs. What decides the pitch type? The movement, spin, grip, speed, something else. For example, I've seen pitches where I think it's a slider and the broadcaster says curveball, which I feel like happens a lot. In that the happens leagues. a lot. And you know what, Mata, you may be right. It is a slider and the fucking announcer is wrong. Yeah. Because I see him get it wrong all the time. And I feel like the answer is the movement more than anything. Like, I don't care if you say it's a curveball. If it's moving right to left. That's a slider. I'm calling that a slider. Yeah. If there's an up and down. Yeah. Usually, usually a, a curveball goes from anywhere to 12 to 6 or like 10 to 4. Yeah. A slider is more like nine to three. Yeah. You know, at its best. But I think, uh, so I would say the movement, uh, the grip, and then, because like, remember back in the day, Isringhausen threw like a knuckle curve? Yeah. Because he had like one, it's like, dude, that has, like, just because you grip it with a knuckle up doesn't mean it's a, nu- it's a curveball. <laughs> yeah. Like you're throwing a curveball. Yeah. You're just doing it with a weird grip. Yeah. Um, it's but, basically just about spin, right? Yeah. It's like how far, how fast can you spin it? And then also, I feel like a lot of times it's whatever the pitcher says they throw. Exactly. Right? Right. Like some dude throws a slider, but he calls it a curveball. Yeah. And then the announcer's like, well, it says here he doesn't even throw a slider. So I guess that was a curveball. Yeah. And he, honestly, to to a hitter, it really doesn't mean anything. It all all it, all it means is just off speed. Yeah. It's just like fast. I, I'm geared for fastball. Whatever your off speed pitch is. I'm going to see if I can handle it, you know, not get too far on front. And that brings me to uh, another great question about uh, off-speed pitches. This one's from Tony at stay underscore frosty underscore sir. Stay frosty, sir. Ooh, stay you frosty, You guys were talking sir. about parents having their kids get Tommy John surgery, which takes batshit crazy sports parent to a whole new level. My question for you guys is how young is too young to have kids throwing curveballs? Watching the Little League World Series, all of these kids are throwing a lot of curveballs, which can't be good for young arms. I would say, uh, I wouldn't, if I had a, a kid, I wouldn't start messing around with curveballs until he's 15 or 16. I would say sophomore year in high school. Yeah, just about there, yeah. And and obviously, uh, it depends on the kid, like sure. growth. Yeah, whatever. Like I didn't grow between I grew between my sophomore and and junior year. Yeah, that was a freakish thing. Yeah, but you but can't a lot, count on that. But a lot of times these kids, you know, I'm glad he brought up the Little League World Series because these yeah. kids, the best kids in the Little League World Series are the kids who grew right and are, and are like their adult size right. at 12. Yeah, that's why you almost never see the kid Those who's kids like the in, superstar right go to the, the big, big leagues. leagues. Right, exactly. like where's fucking Danny Almonte? Except for Chef. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah where is Daniel Monte? Yeah. Um, no, I would say you. There should be like a strength and ligament strength, like minimum, to start throwing curveballs. Like when you you can get by, and you can learn how to pitch much better. I think 
It's just just go on fastball changeup. I was gonna say the same thing. Yeah. I think if you're if you think that your kid is a talented pitcher, yeah, teach him fastball changeup and teach him fastball changeup until be like, I want to see you dominate kids with if you if you want to be yeah. a big leaguer, you will be able to dominate kids with fastball changeup until you're a JV high school player. Yeah. And At a honestly, very good high school. And honestly, yeah. yeah. And honestly, if you're going to be a big leaguer, you should probably, you could dominate high school baseball with a fastball fast changeup. Change but I would say at the bare minimum, like, you should not be throwing curveballs as a freshman baseball player. No. Like, you've just moved up. There's no reason. And you're. There's no reason. Yeah. Yeah. And changeup, honestly, changeup is a lot harder harder to deal with, I think, as a hitter than a curveball. Because a curveball just stays up in the zone longer. Yeah. So you can be fooled and still get a lot of it. But a changeup, dude, you're geared for fastball. You're out in front. You're it, you're going to either strike out or just pull it to first base and watch the guy step on the base before you even take three steps. And, and I'm almost going to say, you know, as far from a coaching standpoint, if you can teach your kid fastball change up, like let him like I would say go as literally long as you can. Yeah. Before you go, okay, they've kind of started to figure me out. Right. And, and then add a slider. And then or add a slider. A or, yeah. or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. I think a slider actually takes I, I might not be right on this joke because you're a pitcher. What what gives you more torque uh, like it takes more torque? It feels like curveball would take you more torque than a slider. Yeah. Because you, you kind of release the slider like a fastball. Yeah. Right? Definitely the curveball, but what I've noticed is, and I think you know, maybe it's just me, but I think what tends to happen is guys c- can figure out one and can't figure out the other. Yeah, like you're either a slider guy or a curveball. A guy. lot of times, yeah. right? Like when Cindergard a couple of years ago added like a 97 mile an hour slider to his already 100 mile an hour fastball curveball changeup yeah. repertoire, people were like, "Oh, this is this isn't really fair." I could never get a slider to work. Yeah. Like the closest thing that I could get to a slider to work was like basically moving my arm angle. Like when I would come more from the side yeah. and I'd let, instead of going with that full like spin, yeah. because I'm here instead of going like football style yeah. curveball, right. I'd come here and I'd kind of let it slide off. It would move a little bit more right, right to left. Yeah. So it was like kind of a slider, yeah. but I was basically just still throwing my curveball with less of that torque and yeah. from a different angle. Yeah. But I never got, I never had a pure like slide piece. Yeah. It was always a curveball. Yeah. And then like and kind then of a different, and then angle. just like a kind of a curveball that I released this way instead right. of this way. Just something else to show at him. Yeah. Just something else to throw at yeah. him. Yeah. David Cohn was calling it the Laredo. <laughs> um, this one's from Kukanen. 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 Okay. At K O U K E N N I N. Yeah, it sounds like Kuka DMs with football being dead <laughs> to us now because I've given up football. With football being dead to us now, I'm trying to get into baseball. First of all, shout out to joining me to us yeah, now. Seriously, like he's joined in. Yeah, he's he's for the cause. Yeah, Kuka This a, guy is praying on 2020. True, a true patriot. Yeah. <laughs> With football being dead to us now, I'm trying to get into baseball, but I don't really know how to start on that path to fandom like I was with football. I've recently moved to D.C., so I'm going to root for the Nationals just to be antagonistic towards my girlfriend who likes the Phillies. But what should I be doing to get as into baseball as I was with football? How can I achieve an appreciation like yours for baseball without having it ingrained in my childhood upbringing? Fuck Chase Utley. I mean, start listening to Dirty Slides. Sounds like he's already doing that. Sounds like he's already doing that. I mean, go play softball. I think, like, go play it so you feel it, you know? Instead of, I mean, it would be hard for me to get into, I don't know, what's a sport I haven't played? I mean, I, I played a little soccer, but, like, I don't know, cricket, if I hadn't really played it. I'd say go play some softball. Just go find a little muni league and just... Just run around and throw the ball and hit the ball, you know, and then you might kind of feel it and get into it. I, I would also say um, go t- to baseball games, go to Major League Baseball games. You're in D.C. There's probably a minor league uh, stadium nearby where you can start. Racking. Yeah, going going to a minor league game would be cool. Yeah, yeah definitely. Because you're not going to spend a lot of money 
and you could see right. the guys a little like bit you can't, more up close. You can't like I'm gonna go to a, a major league baseball game every week. You're gonna be poor. Yeah, you're gonna be. But poor. like, there's a minor league. Go get get a, you know, go once every week or once every two weeks for yeah. the rest of the summer. And, uh, I mean, I just saw it. we just got it breaking news. Andy, give us a breaking news, producer. What, what's happening? This is gross. It actually makes me kind of sick. DeMarcus Cousins has just signed a deal with the Golden State Warriors. What? He takes a major pay cut. What? You guys got boogie. Why did we get boogie? I don't know, because you're assholes, and you're like, we're... What did he take? What What did he take? I'm scrolling through What's happening? The Golden State Warriors, I just got an alert from Bleacher no Report. Shit. With alerts, that's fucking We just gross. rocked eyes, because I'm just looking on Twitter. DeMarcus Cousins is headed to Golden State. For how long? How long is he signed? Just this year? A one-year deal. For $5 million? $5.3 million. (laughs) Uh, Sorry for your trouble. Shout out to Henry Hazel. (laughs) Wow. I mean, look. What can I say? I I, I don't know what to say. Cool. I mean, I didn't tell Boogie to sign for $5.3 million. Yeah. I don't know what Boogie was thinking, honestly. He just wants to get one. Yeah. He, he wants to get his ring and then go on to his max deal. Maybe, yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. I would never. I would, that starting lineup is ridiculous. I would never, ever, ever I don't know root for somebody <laughs> to get hurt. I would never do it. I'm just going to say I would never do it. I would never root for somebody, especially somebody on a one-year deal. I thought for sure. I thought for sure you were going to say the Lakers. For sure. No. Well, y'all living in a warrior world now. Just wear it. Um, I'm going to go back to. Let's go back uh, to this. Cooking in. Yeah. I would say go to minor league baseball games. I like that. And Play then some I'll, softball I'll also say one other thing. Play some wiffle ball. Oh yeah, wiffle ball. Yeah. Go on YouTube. Learn to keep score and do that at minor league games. Oh, that's a great idea. That really is a great idea. That'll keep you invested in the game and like you're gonna you do it. it. You're gonna you're basically just gonna be at a minor league baseball game, trying to keep score, learning the game. Right. And then you know what? Go 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 to a couple minor league games and then go to a nationals game versus the Phillies with your girlfriend and be like, I'm keeping score. I'm, I'm keeping keeping score like, what babe. the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Like, babe, I'm keeping score. Yeah. Let me show you. Let yeah. me show you what I'm talking about. Also, if you go to a minor league game, you might watch some kids as they grow up, you know, and you might have something personally invested in their, you know, coming up to the show or whatever. Yeah. Good idea, Joe. Thank you. Uh, Still, go play the play the game, too. So I've got one more. Okay, this is an old one that we had uh, from a couple weeks ago that I wanted to get to. Slide into DMs. Kid from my high school I was ma- is making his first major league Baseball start tonight. This is from last week. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For the Blue Jays. His name is Ryan Brocky. He was a few years older than me, but he was always a stereotypical jock douchebag. <laughs> it's kind of cool, but he made it to the big leagues. But I hope you get but I hope you get shelled. Do you guys have any stories of people you know who made it to the big leagues with uh in the major league baseball, NBA, NFL? Were you cheering for their success or failure? I'm for sure hoping he gets lit up. Love the pod, fam. Also, side story, he was a senior when I was a freshman, and he was dating a girl in my grade who would always cheat on him with one of my boys, not a dude. <laughs> so I remember Brocky, I checked it that mm-hmm. uh, after I read it last week. He had like a decent first start. I think he yeah. went like five and change, like a couple runs. Not not stellar. Not the shelling he, uh, not the shelling he wanted, for. And, yeah. not, and certainly not like some freak big league, right. big league debut. Um, I love that this kid went to his high school and he's like, has no school pride whatsoever. Yeah, he's just right. like, fuck you. I fuck this guy. Child. I'm glad my boy fucked your girl back in the day. <laughs> also, what kind of senior who's a future Stud. big league baseball player? Right. I understand him fucking like a hot freshman. Yeah. But getting cheated on by, by another freshman? freshman. I mean, that's Sturdy. the old, like, yeah, that's all I need to know. Not a dude. Yeah, and exactly. like, like put that on the scouting report. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody should have found one of the scouts and been like, guys, I know. You guys, this guy doesn't have that face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not confident. Do you have any guys who you played against or watched play in high school or played with that uh, went yeah. to the show? Um, I played against in high school. Um, we called him the fat kid. His name was Mark Walker. 
Tyler Walker. Tyler Walker pitched with the pitched uh, for the Giants um, and a couple other teams. Had a pretty decent big league career. He was kind of a middle reliever. Uh, as a freshman, he was just a total stud, and he blew gas. And uh, I got a I got a walk off single up the middle off him in I think my junior or senior year. But um, he uh, yeah. But when he got to the show, I totally rooted for him. Yeah yeah yeah. Go get it. Um, my probably most standout one. There was a, a so I went to a school. I graduated with a class of like forty boys. Uh-huh. Uh My freshman year, so figure our senior class was yeah. r- close to the same size. Right. Three dudes from that senior class played in the NFL. No way. Yeah. Todd Pollock, who was the starting uh, quarterback on the team, ended up going to Boston College, where they transitioned him into tight end. Yeah, and he played in the big. He played in the NFL. Yeah, and he was also like a All American lacrosse player. Right. Uh, Junior Lord, who was our wide receiver running back, he played in. Uh, he went to like Guilford or something like that, and then went to the NFL, and also I believe played in the xfl or the arena league he's and not then, he hate me is he no no and then a third guy i'm who i'm totally um i'm totally blanking on now ended up playing like d tackle for the carolina panthers and yeah. would always come back and work at the uh, work out at school and everybody was like oh he's just definitely on juice <laughs> like he's the biggest dude ever yeah. and definitely on juice i forget uh, that kid's name but probably my most standout story is uh in basketball Played in a holiday tournament, and we played against Dan Gadzarich. Oh, I remember Dan Gadzarich, former a, warrior. Yeah, seven footer. Uh, played at UCLA. Yeah, drafted by the Bucks. Yes, I was always rooting for him, including in the game we played, <laughs> because he played. He honestly played with two like the, their backcourt was two straight up like deadhead hippies like one kid i think wore like a shell necklace oh no and the other kid had like white dreads yeah. they look like shaggy and scooby <laughs> and their only job was to throw lobs to this right. guy and he dunked on so many people <laughs> he was seven feet tall at one point he got one he got like a loose ball and was like and they they threw him a lob from like half court and he dunked on my friend chris and i i like i did the like jump off the bench oh yeah <laughs> But I also liked him because at that time, I think that was my junior year, and it was our holiday tournament, so it was like yeah. relatively early in the year, and that was the first year I made the team. They beat us so bad that I got my first significant playing time yeah. on the varsity. I scored five points. Would have been six, except I missed one free throw. One for two at the line, then two other buckets. Nice. Including a, How like, many minutes? Like seven minutes. 5.7 like minutes. Yeah. I mean, your PER is through the roof. Yeah. Um, and then just always rooted for him. Yeah. Big Dutch. He was Dutch and he wore, and he wore goggles and he, he dunked on everybody. He was a fucking stiff in the NBA. Yeah. He was a stiff. <laughs> yeah. But he went to, he was even bad at UCLA. No. Oh, yeah. But they're like, but it was like, seven you're seven feet tall. tall. Yeah. And I'm telling you their inbounds play under the basket. Yeah. Was literally one of these hippies slap the ball and then he just throw it up <laughs> and then he would catch it and dunk on all of us. Yeah. Like he just caught it, and it was great. The the final one of those, he slapped it. He dunked on like two people, and they and like our coach called the timeout was like scrubs, and yeah. then they were like scrubs. Yeah. So I didn't actually get to be on the floor with Gads Reach, but oh, him dunking on somebody got my got me my first significant NBA uh, uh, varsity minutes. Shout out to Dan, former Warrior Dan Gads Reach. Yeah, uh, I got a couple more here. So. This one, LOL sliding in again. This is from Jeff Jablonski, 25. A regular, a regular in the sliding in the DMs. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's really important to talk about. Trout is going to win MVP again this season. I was wondering if you guys feel as if he will receive the LeBron treatment. We saw earlier this week, LeBron got fucked out of another MVP. Do you guys think that if Trout continues this pace, he will eventually begin to under be underappreciated and not receive the awards he deserves? Or can the Cheddar Dicks that make up the baseball community give Trout the respect that he deserves. Hashtag fuck James Harden. I think, I think that there's um, more kind of uh, MVP, getting tired of the same guy winning the MVP, whatever that is called, in the NBA than MLB. Um, although Mike Trout 
I mean, the only time I, the only time I thought like, oh, he shouldn't get the MVP was the time that Miggy Maybe, Cabrera yeah. went triple crown. Yeah, you know, I think he'll get probably end up with like six MVP. How many does he have now? He's got at least three, two, right? I he's think got he three. three. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna end up with six. I don't think he's gonna get screwed that badly. Yeah, no, like, I don't think. So. I think baseball writers and the the nerds that make up baseball yeah. press are so deep into the analytics. Yeah, and nothing proves that Mike Trout is the most valuable player in baseball, like all the advanced stats where he's passing Hall of Famers in war. Or the fact that the Angels are always kind of good. Yeah. <laughs> for yeah. no other reason. For no other reason but Mike Trout. Yeah. yeah. I think, uh, no, I think for sure, I think he's going to reel off a bunch. Yeah. Um, this one, I sort of, it was a long message and I sort of cut it off, but I'll pick it up in the middle. The gist of it is... Um, so the beginning that I believe got cut off is that um, the, the the discussion of Larry Walker being in the Hall of Fame, uh, this person says that he absolutely believes he should. And the Coors effect is a little bit overblown. And I'll pick it up in the middle. Mm -hmm. This is from Chris Cunningham at C underscore Cunningham 95, uh, which led me to a thought that I've had for a while but was tentative to ask anyone because I thought it might be dumb. Feel free to call me an idiot if you think so. But why do people get so fixated on the Coors effect when it comes to Hall of Fame greatness talks, but nobody bats an eye when hundreds of Yankees get inducted? That place pretty much plays like a little league park. So why don't people ever take that into consideration? Just a thought. Might be a dumb one. Thanks, guys. For the record, I'm a White Sox fan, so this isn't coming from any sort of Rockies bias. Right. He, believes, he believes Larry Walker should be in the Hall of Fame, he thinks the Coors effect is overblown and wants to know why no one talks about the Yankee Stadium effect. Well, which... I, I do agree with him. It is a Little League park. Um, it's just not a mile into the sky. Right. Like Coors Field is. So there's definite, like, you know, thinner air and all that. I, I think Larry Walker, the only reason Larry Walker is not in the Hall of Fame yet is just because his period of dominance just wasn't that long. It was maybe seven years rather than like a guy like Todd Helton, who I think is going to get end up in the, in the uh, hall of fame. He had just a more consistent, longer duration of being great. That's what I think. Well, I mean, I know his, uh, we went over his numbers. Yeah. They're all pretty close. Yeah. Except he's got, like 2100 he didn't hit any of the numbers that are just like automatic right he didn't hit 3,000 hits he didn't have 500 home runs um i think larry walker was a great player um i think he's right on the cusp of hall of fame but i think the hall of fame's stupid now so yeah if he gets in, and if, and i want to say fine. that i 100 percent agree with the sentiment yankee stadium is a joke yeah um it is only becoming more of a joke yeah. as guys get bigger a guy like Larry Walker, I'm not sure Larry Walker wouldn't have had bigger stats in Yankee Stadium than he Agreed. did at Coors Agreed. with a fucking little league right field. And how many how many home runs did Brett Gardner have? Last exactly, year? I don't know, but if he had more than 15, yeah, the Coors effect is less than the Yankee Stadium. Yeah, effect. of course, it mostly affects one side of the plate, right? So that's a factor, right? But the other answer to the question is why did the Yankees? Because they're the fucking Yankees. I'm pretty sure the the way it works is your paper has to have a circulation of a certain amount to be considered some sort of major publication, mm -hmm. and then you get a ballot. Certainly. And uh, New York has the Post, the Times, the Daily News, the fucking New York Newsday. Right. And there's fucking Yankees. They're, they're, and they're easily the most celebrated team. Yeah. And they used to cherry pick uh, in the 50s and 60s. They used to take your best players and tell you to go fuck yourselves. And... The final slide into the DMs, something that came through today, and uh, I I really really enjoyed this from Max Detweiler at Max Detweiler. Uh, Fangraphs has a new fan experience index. Don't know if you've seen it, but seems interesting. Would love to hear your guys' take. Um, so I pulled up the fan index. I'm gonna get to it right now. Um, here we go. Uh, introducing the fan index. So just to kind of briefly run through it, there's a, a lot of different criteria and here are their percentages that they are um, kind of count, account for. Affordability. Is attending your team's home games financially feasible? That's worth 
Ownership. Is ownership committed to creating a positive on-field product while also maintaining an atmosphere in which a wide variety of fans feel welcome? Also 18%. Game day experience. Also 18%. How enjoyable is seeing your team in person? Ballpark and broadcast accessibility. 15%. How easy is it to get to games? To hear a broadcast in your native language? To feel welcome at the stadium? To access insider information? Broadcast. 15%. How good are the TV and radio broadcasts of games? Spring training facilities, which I find interesting. 9%. How is the experience of seeing your boys in the spring? Laundry. 5%. How stylish are their jerseys and hats? Social media, 1%. Do the franchise's social media and marketing team add any fun? And I honestly think that should be a little higher than 1%. That should be a lot higher, but baseball is, like, behind the time, so. And mascot, 1%, because why not? Why not? Because fucking mascots are lame. Yeah. So let's just make social media at least 2%. Yeah, and and let's have no mascots. factor in this, because I get it. There are some furries out there who like to jerk off the Philly (laughs) fanatic. But... (laughs) Otherwise, who wants it? So what what are the top five? So the top five. Number one. San Francisco Giants. San Francisco Giants. Yep. Affordability, six out of ten. Ownership, eight. Ballpark experience, ten. Agree. Accessibility, nine. Agree. Broadcasters. I don't know how you feel about the broadcasters. I think the broadcasters are pretty good. They have John Miller and uh, oh, Mike yeah. John, Kruko John and, Miller's great. Yeah, I always love going to the bathroom and hearing Miller when I'm at the ballpark. Dwayne Kuyper. And so they, they have a good team. Spring training, six. Laundry, eight. Social media, five. Mascot, eight. You guys got eight for fucking... For Lucille? Lucille. Yeah, that means nothing to me. The mascot vote is stupid. But the Chicago whatever. Cubs are two. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the ballpark experience at, 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 at Wrigley Field has got to be... They if it's a, not a 10, it's a 9. Then it's not like what's a 10? Yeah, apparently AT&T. AT&T and thought, Pittsburgh. AT&T and Pittsburgh are the only 10s on the list. Maybe they're just like they're saying that cuz Wrigley is old, but just the bars involved. Yeah, everywhere. they have a, they have for Chicago, they have 7 for affordability, 8 for ownership, 9 for ballpark, 8 for accessibility, 8 for broadcasters, 8 for swing training, 6 for laundry, 9 for social media. Seven for mascot. I thought on laundry the Giants would get kind of dinged, but they didn't. I like the Giants uniforms. I like them. I think they could Boston be cool. uh, three. Okay. Colorado at four. They score a ten on affordability and a ten on spring training, and a nine on social media and a nine. Oh, on- they have a brand new spring t- training facility, and they have an eight in ballpark experience. Okay. And then five. The New York Mets. The Los Angeles the Dodgers. Dodgers. Uh, nine ballpark experience. A they get a nine. They get a nine with I all know. those murders in the parking lot. I know that's a little. I love that's a little high. I love Dodger Stadium. And I, I love Dodger little, Stadium too. It's a little high. Yeah, Oakland you get is dinged for getting stabbed. Oakland is remarkably like <laughs> eleven. That's pretty good for. The I don't know how general. affordability. Okay, it's a nine. Yeah, which I disagree with honestly because parking was thirty five dollars. Ownership four, ballpark experience five, accessibility six, broadcasters seven, spring training eight, laundry and social media they got tens, and then the mascot they got eight. Um, well, that laundry's good. Maybe their social media is incredible. Uh, let's go down to Andy's. We'll jump down to Andy's. Cincinnati, uh, Cincinnati Reds. Reds. They are sixteen. Uh, they get a. God, we're almost to the point you guys where I got can't a new stadium. A too. nine for affordability, a four for ownership, a five for ballpark experience. Uh, and then let's see what they did. Ever they did well on the mascot. They did well on the mascot. They got a nine for the mascot, which is only one percent. You got anything to say about this, Ruther? Yeah, I do. The stadium, the stadium looks nice on TV. But here's the thing: I've complained. It's a generic new stadium. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think a lot of them are very similar. And I've I've been able to go to a lot of the new ones. Yeah. And to me, and I know people would go nuts and they hear this. I've been to St. Louis's. I've been to Cincinnati's. Like, like a lot of those to me. They look the same. I do agree. Washington all, looks all the that, same. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Philly, a lot of those stadiums yeah. kind of, there's no character. Right. The only new, new stadiums with character, I would say, are the Giants. And I haven't been to Seattle, but Joe, you loved it, right? I haven't been. I go. I oh, go okay. tomorrow. Or, oh, uh, that, oh, fuck! 
I go today. I'm at the ballpark right now. Right now, to listen yeah. To this. But even Petco, and I agree with you about the Giants. Of course. I haven't been to Petco. Petco to me has character. I think it's Prano, got that building I think, in left field. That's I think cool. Prano would agree. Petco yeah. has character. It's just the unis. Yeah. They just get and zero Petco, unis. Petco's. Uh, sorry, the the Padres are six on the list. They're six. What do they yeah. get on uniforms? Uh, let's. That's a great question. Because if they get ten, this whole list is bullshit. I agree. Uh, they are three. So that's good. I'll tell you what. I have uh, the Mets are close to the bottom. They're about nine up from the bottom. So that puts them at like 21. What's I mean, first of all, their laundry is nice. I so like the Mets. Let's versus. talk about this where I think we're getting screwed. We only got a six on the ballpark. I think City Field is at least a seven. I haven't I, been. There. I honestly say it's, it looks it looks like one of those new like average ballparks, though. Like it doesn't look like, but, there, but like the the difference between, in my opinion, the difference between uh, City Field, while it's cookie cutter new ballpark, yeah. and like a Cincinnati, is the experience around the ballpark. You have like you can go, you can go straight up to the fence in the bullpens yeah. and right. You can, uh, you have the big food and New York food and booze rotunda. That's another thing. Which Cincinnati has, could be getting. Uh, dinged for fucking gold star chili and the fact it's like muggy but as fuck. What I what I love about City Field, which I guess maybe isn't considered when you are actually inside the ballpark, but yeah. if you go to that food, there's a they've done a complete mirror job of the field facing scoreboard to the other side, so that when you're out over there, you have the same visual experience on one side oh, of that's that. That's cool, which I really like. That's cool. They got I just that think in Cincy. No, my thing with the Mets stadium, which I what, what, have you been there? What's that? To the Mets, yeah. Stadium. For, jo- for Joe's, oh yeah, let let you, let Brandon pitch. My for, bad for Joe's pitch. Now, I I felt like you're saying I felt like it was cookie cutter. I did like I don't know what it's called now. At the time, it was Pepsi Porch. Yeah, where Shake Shack and all that stuff was in the outfield. I like that. But my big beef with like the Mets stadium is it's just probably the location of Flushing. Oh well, that's there's nothing outside. Like when you walk outside the Red Stadium. It's just lined with bars. A hundred percent agree with you, that. Do you know what I'm saying? Because it's in the right. city. Yeah. Right. So what sucks for the Mets Stadium is you walk out. What's what's the one spot? The only uh, spot. McFadden's. McFadden's is the only. Right, which is attached to the stadium as opposed to like yeah. stuff across. I completely agree with that. I don't know if that's something that's considered like what's going on outside the stadium. Of course, they have to do something about that. Um, it's a nightmare. It's chop shops out there. It's like gross. Yeah. Flush. I don't have a problem with flushing. But they have to do something around the area, the Willits Point area. But I'll say this: with Yankee Stadium being a six and City Field being a six, to me that's offensive. And I'll say this: broadcasters, we get a nine. If if Darling, Keith Hernandez, and, and Gary, Gary Thorne, Thorne, yeah, aren't yeah. a ten, right. then there is no ten. And also, Howie Rose on the radio, like if that's not if that's not a ten. And there was. There was no 10. There's but no like, 10 for broadcasters? There's no 10 for broadcasters, but, like, there should be. And it should be the Mets. Yeah. I mean, I felt the same way about the Giants. Just, like, I, I love their guys. And, so, honestly, they give us a, know. They give us a 9. Keith, for, we don't have a Keith 9 Hernandez, for Mr. Though. Matt, which is too high. Like, man. he's a fucking baseball head. Nah, it's dumb, man. They, they should have social media as a bigger thing than the mascots. The mascots, that's, that's old, They man. did give us a 2 for ownership. Again, like... Maybe it will come back down to earth. Should you get a two? No, should you should get a one or yeah, a zero. Yeah. But like, give us you our credit. get a not Take applicable. away our credit where it's not due and give us our credit where, where it's it is. Due. Yeah. Like, we're, City Field's better than Yankee Stadium. The broadcasters they take are the one best in baseball. Off the owner and give it to your broadcast. Yeah. But give the fuck, turn it up to 11. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Keith Hernandez. Keith Hernandez. We don't have Keith Hernandez. No one has we got, Keith Hernandez. There's we only got one. John Miller. We don't got Keith Hernandez. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the. So that was our baseball fan experience and uh, you fan index, and you guys can look that up. And now our final, final, final slide into the DMs, which will transition us nicely into dude or not a dude, and we'll wrap up the show. This from Stoli at J underscore Stoli. I'm pretty sure he is a Nationals fan. Jason Worth just retired. Dude or not a dude? I mean, the, the physical attributes of Jason Worth would lead you to say dude yeah um like he's been a good to very good to average outfielder as he got older but he could always run he could always throw he hits bombs sort like, sort of the underrated 
member of that Phillies championship oh, team. Oh, certainly. And then uh, and straight then up like a G for those national yeah, straight teams. up like the guy. Yeah. Who, they were like, we're going to take Worth and we're going to build a team. And like he's going to be a leader for us. Yeah. And, uh, and Clutch as fuck. Yeah. As a Mets fan, hated him. Clutch as fuck. I got no reason to say he's not a dude. I have no reason to say. And I hate Philly. Yeah. And I hate, hate the Nationals. <laughs> yeah. And no, I mean, like, I remember when he was on the Dodgers, I was like, we got to get that guy as a Giants fan, you know, and they were barely playing him. Yeah. I'm like, what are you guys doing? And then just, you know, was one of the first guys to go with the beard and hair. Yeah. And kept it. Yeah. All of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Which transition. Did bitch out because you got into into a slump and then shaved his beard. Yeah. Which brings me to this. The theme for dude or not a dude this week, bearded dudes. I like Or not dudes. Love it. Justin Turner, dude or not a dude. dude. To and me, dude. If if you're if I and I've watched it and I in fact it's my screensaver on my computer. Yeah. If you're taking that leg kick against Noah Syndergaard throwing a hundred in the big leagues. And you look like a garden gnome? You are dude. You are a dude. And also, have you seen his wife? Yeah. Smoke show. Smoke show. Dude. Which, by the way, Pizza Starro brought that up in the Aaron Boone, dude or not a dude. Oh yeah. Like when in doubt, if your wife's a smoke, you're yeah. a dude. You're a dude. Well, that's what, you know, that's that's what scouts say. If you got a hot girlfriend, says you got a lot of self-confidence. Dallas Keuchel. All right. I don't know anything about Dallas Keuchel. As a person. As a person. Or, yeah, anything about him. I right. do know there was this really creepy trainer at my <laughs> boxing gym who... Heard I like you already know you already know more than any most right. people now. Heard I like baseball, and he was like, "Oh, my buddy Dallas Keuchel, man, he's doing so good." I'm like, "Yeah, he's yeah, he's doing really well. Good job." He's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna go see him in Anaheim." Da 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 da. And I'm like, "Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'm glad you have that friend. He he bring it up all the time, all the time." And then uh, my guy Richard was like, "Man, you know about that guy who was Dallas Keuchel's friend?" I'm like. Nah, he's like, oh, he goes down to Palm Springs and fucking, he's a gigolo. So, I don't know. I don't know what that is. I'm going to say this. Dallas Keuchel. This has, is all speculative, right, by the way. Is Has a weird Amish beard situation. Like mm-hmm. the beard to no hair situation. Yeah. Well, when I say gigolo for dudes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. In Palm Springs. We got, Palm, oh, got Okay. Sorry. We should, you, I, I knew, but we yeah, should, yeah, yeah, we should yeah, clarify yeah. Palm for the Springs. audience. Los Angeles, San Palm Springs, Francisco, either Coast fucking Dudes triangle. or the elderly. Yes. You exactly. know? Probably exactly. some some combination of the two. Exactly. Um also Keichel uh had a postseason meltdown, right? Didn't he? He did. And uh Cy Young winner. Yeah. But they brought in a real dude. A real <laughs> dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. When like when you have a Keichel and you bring in Verlander, it's because you want a you one. You got a dude problem. You want a one. Yeah. And you want to move Keiko to your two. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're when you bring in, in somebody to be the one, right. You it's because you're questioning whether or not He's your one, one is a dude. Yeah. You're like, fuck this. We need a dude. So your gut is not a dude. I'm going not a dude. I'm gonna say not a dude too. Derek Norris. Derek Norris the catcher. Yeah. <laughs> big beard. Big I beard. I don't know. Big, big hacks. Yeah, big hacks. Yeah. Something about me, Derek Norris reminds me of Matt Noakes. Oh, a lot. Every time I tune in, the guy's hitting a bomb. Like Matt just, Noakes came up as a catcher, but was really more of a hitter. Yeah. A lot like Derek Norris. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like Derek Norris always hitting, but then you look at his stats and you're like, he's never hitting. He's never hitting. <laughs> but that. He's no Matt Stairs. <laughs> yeah. That fantastical thing where I think he's really, really good, even yeah. though he's not. It makes me lean dude. I've got no reason to say he's not a dude because I don't see him play enough. Because he doesn't play enough. Because he doesn't hit enough. Right. So, but I'll say, dude, I I got no other. Mike reason. Napoli. Napoli to me is a dude. Yeah, I mean, he's a legit. He's been playing. Yeah, for a long time, on big time teams. Came he up went, at the, those, the Red Sox, right? Uh, he come Angels. Up the Angels. Yeah. Yeah, and then he went over the Red Sox. He played with the Rangers. I mean, if you're just looking for a big and now he's on, masher, and now he's at the Indian CH. I mean, we don't have any background information. No, a la Keuchel, right, dude, dude. I don't know if we've done it before. What about Charlie Blackman? Charlie Blackman, yeah, great question. He's 
he seems like a dude. I, like I'm going to need more information, yeah. but he seems like a dude. Yeah, for sure. Did we do Hunter Pence? Yeah, uh, no, we didn't. It's we Hunter, talked. We talked about a scouting report. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, we talked about the scouting report for sure. Hunter Pence, dude or not a dude? Uh, I mean, I'm gonna leave you leave this one to you, and then I'm gonna steal a San Francisco Giant from you at the end. Okay. Um, well, the reason I, I don't think we mentioned Hunter Pence is because he's not particularly bearded. Yeah, he'll go playoff beard, he's but it's had, a very scraggly, yeah. like. Every once in a while, it's out there. I'm though. a wizard who lives in a cave, kind of like yeah. thing. Um, look, the fact that that guy is in the big leagues with that scouting report and 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 the athletic skills, dominant skills that he has, and he's kind of crazy, and he's definitely a he's definitely a locker room guy. Um, and the signs, the signage the, that comes the with them, the pen signs are great. Yeah, like. Yeah, he's a dude. He's for sure a dude. Yep. He's kind of a weird dude, but he's a dude. And then the beard. Oh, Brian Wilson. Brian Wilson. Has there ever been more of a more dude? Of a dude? <laughs> no. No, no. The that dude, is the dude. He's dressing up as a fucking Yeti to go to the ESPYs. Yeah. It looks like he painted his beard on with shoe polish. He had Pat Burrell deadlifting as the as the 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 freak from what's it called Pulp Fiction yeah yeah right the leather guy yeah yeah his game day workouts are just like him fucking squatting like nine hundred pounds nine hundred pounds right and like so many dudes and then he told the owner of the Giants to go fuck himself because he didn't get his ring in time or something yeah in front of the whole fucking stadium that's dude behavior and like so many dudes almost it's almost like what happens to dudes is shine so bright and they burned out so fast so fast yeah. Brian Wilson. You can't do it forever. <laughs> but you can be enshrined in the book of Deuteronomy you forever. Can forever. Yeah. Laz, that's our show. All right, buddy. What, uh, you, got? what you got coming up? Uh, what do I have coming up? I feel like I got shows, but not this week. Um, just, I mean, my biggest thing right now is just trying to get the gays in the playoffs. Seven and seven. Seven and seven. Four straight losses. Four straight losses. Is it safe to say your manager's not a dude? What's going on here? Are you Mickey Callawaying me? What yeah, happened? No, I mean, like, we lost three guys to, to professional baseball, Joe. Yeah. The independent professional baseball. So I think we're just. Anybody see an aircraft carrier around here? <laughs> I just think we're honestly in this like kind of mid-season off the bullshit. Yeah, uh, where we're just like, yeah, we'll get it together. There's a lot, I don't think we're playing with nothing. Gays Coliseum. How how many games have you been back in Gays Coliseum? Three games, two games, two games, and so winless in the return. Yeah, yeah. got, got we got a game. We'll be there Saturday and Sunday, both at one p.m. Um, Jay Larson throwing out the first pitch. Really? Sunday. Yeah, and and we got a uh, Jay Larson. Uh, home run derby, like a crafty's yeah, home run derby. Home run we derby. gotta get Larson. We should have both of them on here to talk. Should oh, definitely to get Larson on. Yeah, just to pump it up there to talk home run derby. Stupid home run contest. At Andy Lazarus on Twitter. At Twitter, Andy Lazarus on Insta. What's the other one? At Venice Gaze. At Venice Gaze. That's it. I'm at Fixture Life on Twitter. At Joe Prano on Instagram. JoePrano.com for all my shows. I'll be at Safeco today. If you're listening to this early in the morning. I'm at Safeco. Come see me in Seattle. Come see me in Lake Chelan. Say, Chelan. say what's up to my guy, D. Gordon, for me. I will. Yeah. Uh, did you see their future uniforms? Yeah, they're the same future uniforms from like 20 years ago. Yeah. That was dumb. Uh, Could have been better. Come see me in Lake Chelan. Come see me at Bingle Fest. Come see me in San Diego. Come see me and Ruther, uh, our producer, here at uh, Great at, job today, at Ruther. Comedy Bar in Chicago in September for the Midwest Dirtball Meetup. That's our show. Fuck Chase Otley. Fuck him.